Now, uh, the software says we're live, but I know that it takes about 30 seconds till everything starts to, you know, actual uh, show on the screen. So I'm just going to wait until then. And I think everybody's uh, everybody's live. So hi, hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, this is nice. So, wow. <laughs> As I said, this is going to be kind of the last Christmassy live stream I'm going to do uh, this year. Uh, there's still going to be live streams, don't worry. But I'm not going to do Christmas theme. There's just one week left to Christmas. So whatever I finish today and tomorrow is going to be the things that I finish for Christmas. And that's it, right? Um, but I want you to do in this live, last live stream, I want you to do something more special. I want you to actually show you how you can um, color or uh, watercolor on black watercolor paper. So this is black watercolor paper. This is not black paper. So there's apparently a difference. Um, this is much thicker paper uh, and it has a little bit of tooth. Normal black paper that you find where you can do your doodles with white gel pen. It doesn't have this tooth and it's very smooth. Uh, and this is uh, something I bought here in the Netherlands. Is the company is called Van Gogh, and they have black watercolor paper. Now, the trick with this is you need some watercolors or some water medium, right? That will stand out against the black paper. And black paper is, um, yeah it's quite a, a different style to to draw as in with normal white paper you will try to preserve the white of the paper and you'll try to you know create the highlights and with black paper you're gonna probably add them a little bit later on it's, it's a little bit of a different style because once you put the color in you know that's going to be it um that to be said um i did some testing so uh, i did some testing with uh what what works and i even tested watercolors to see if it actually works on the black paper it didn't so i'm going to show you here what is my test my test uh, paper um i have two main brands of um, let's say we call them metallic watercolors i only have two brands um and I have one brand that I bought because I thought I'm going to be cheap and I'm going to buy the ones that are one euro and so on. Oh, it doesn't really work. Uh, don't go cheap, okay? It's not worth it for your money. But let me explain. Um, here I have what is called uh, Luminarte. Luminarte or Twinkling H2Os. And these are, these are coming in these um, tiny containers um with a, a nice name on the back and you just open it up you put water in and then you mix it up and they have two types i think or they have like 200 or something colors um the ones that i have um i have them for more than five years i think um and they still come in the plastic containers because that's how i bought them so i didn't use them that much wonderful colors they also have an iridescent uh, line and the iridescent the difference between the normal metallic and the iridescent is that on white paper they show up differently they show up a, a little bit of a different color than what they would show on black paper but on black paper this is how they look like it's very pastel i have a blue uh kind of violet green um and this was their attempt at the red i'm not gonna use that but you know just gonna assume that it was a red and this was a darker green, which I didn't really like. So I kind of I kind of chose only a few colors here. Um, these ones are their normal iridescent, uh, their normal colors, uh, which is more in the copper, bronze, and silver lines. Uh, really beautiful. But if I were to compare them with my more expensive ones, my more expensive metallic watercolors, which are my fine tank line uh, that I have here. Um, the fine tech you can clearly see, and I hope I can show you in in this video. The fine tech is really opaque, 
as in the pigmentation of the colors is like super top notch really opaque um gorgeous colors the luminarte are also nice but they're much more transparent so it also depends what type of things that you want to create with them okay because uh, I would assume that for something that is in the background, you might want to use the ones that are not so pigmented and the ones in the foreground, you want to use the ones with pigment. If I were to put my money where it is, and I'm going to make a separate video about this, really comparing and showing really close by how they look like, I would choose the Fine Tech. Also, they have lots of colors and lots of different things, right? But since I still have the Twinkly HDOs, I'm going to use them. I think these are about $4.99 um, a jar, right? And this was like 20 something um, for six colors. So, okay, comparable, but Fintech, Fintech really different colors. Um, I also tried watercolors here. You can see that with normal watercolors, you don't really see them. <laughs> They're really transparent. And even with like full load of color, um, I couldn't get anything like, okay, there's some sp splotches here and there that might look like coloring, but I couldn't use the normal watercolors. They're very transparent and not really standing out. They're not very opaque. Okay. Now here is something that I want to show you the no brand one. Oh, hi. Hi, Andre. Hi. <laughs> so, um, the no brand watercolors. Why did I choose them? You can see that um, the colors might look a little bit more vibrant, but I didn't like that the binder was showing. Let me see if I can catch it in the light. The binder and the color was pulling to the sides. It was really, really weird uh, coloring and it, it gives it a very weird shine. And this is like the one euro one. I'm suspecting that they're done with a little bit of gouache or something inside <laughs> to get this. Um, they're not really vibrant. There's nowhere near comparison with either the Fintech or the Luminarte. Okay, so take it as it is. But this is what we're going to use. And uh, you can see here I was trying to create something with my uh, uh, white, uh, white ink. And that was my initial idea. I uh, was a uh, winter scene with the trees made out of uh, a candy. Uh, it isn't turned out very well. So we're going to do just a, a flower wreath and with a nice sentiment for Christmas. Or not really Christmas, more like holiday because not everybody necessarily celebrates Christmas, right? Let's, let's be real, not everybody celebrates Christmas. So this is what I'm going to do. Gather some money, get the good stuff. Okay? Okay, let's let's get to it. What am I going to use today? I bought a new brush. This is a Escoda Versatile number no. six. Wonderful brush. Uh, it's synthetic. It's cheaper than uh, normal brushes, but but uh, still holds a point. Uh, it's not fraying and anything. So I'm I'm just trying this once nowadays. I have water. I have my Fine Tech and my H2Os. Okay. So, what, what we do is I'm going to take water and I have a pipette here uh, with my water and I'm just going to add water. Remember that if you want to use them, they need to have water inside because they need to get creamy and nice. So, I'm going to add water here. Um, I added some water before we started the live stream because I know it takes some time to, you know get ahead so what am i going to do actually it's interesting because i remember you can see that the twinkling h2o's except for the red the rest of them don't really show their real color that's because they're iridescent and they will show it will show like kind of whitish on a white paper and totally different color on black so i kind of know this is green this is kind of purplish and this is blue and this is more of a white and this is red, right? So I'm going to start with the red. I'm going to wet my brush. Oh, yeah. Well, there wouldn't be any red without a circle. So I have my circle now. I don't have to use <laughs> a plate anymore. So, oh, hi. 
Hi Florine. Hi Adriana. Hello, hello. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use a pencil and my um, circle guide here and I'm gonna draw a circle guide with my pencil. You maybe not be able to see it because it's on black but I will. Yeah. And this is going to help me to uh, go around in a circle. Uh, not very good otherwise with uh, with it. Okay. So let's start. I'm going to make some really simple flowers. So bear with me. My cats have woken up. They've eaten, and now they're fighting a little bit. So don't worry. <laughs> uh, happy maybe will want to come back and uh, have some fun. Okay. Let's uh, let's see how this looks. So you can see how creamy this is. This is really nice. This is gonna be really nice color. And I'm gonna make some flowers. I'm gonna start here in a corner. Don't have really a plan, but let's assume that this is kind of a side. side plant and I'm going to do a front one here gonna do another one and a tiny one here it's gonna make more sense once we go along let me deepen some colors. Okay. <laughs> the cats are fighting. Yeah, they are they're in their fighting times today. So let me try let's see, maybe another one here, tinier one. What I'm hoping is that the cats don't come and start drinking from this watercolor. If you're wondering how they make these colors, uh, they're making them with mica powder and mica is like a um, mineral that when you grind it, so it kind of it's flaky and kind of reflects everything around and you can grind it really fine and add it to any other pigments and a binder and then it'll be uh, very shiny because it kind of reflects the light and because you you make it with a pigment it will reflect the light that is surrounding it so the pink pink being red it will reflect that one so this kind of how they're made okay um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get my purple I hope I didn't put too much water in my purple, but let's see how this works. I'm going to make a tiny purple here. I'm gonna make another purple here. I hope you all can see what I'm doing here, but I'm using the belly of the brush to just uh, drag color in. Okay, and now I'm going to go with the with the blue. And I'm really hoping this is the blue. <laughs> It would be funny if this isn't the blue. Okay. This is the blue. Okay. 
technicality is technicality. I'm hoping that you guys can uh, have some fun in there and also draw your own. Uh, if you have the fine text, please join me. It's really nice. If you don't, just use whatever you have there because coloring and doing art together it's uh, really nice especially so close to christmas that's why i'm doing these live streams as well um enjoying them okay going to try to take some more of this blue uh, maybe make here a tiny flower it doesn't have to be precise at all really it needs to be just pretty We'll see what type of flowers we need to add once we are done. And I'm going to just let it a bit dry out because I'm not uh, going to add too much. I want to add the center that is like golden. But I don't want to ruin too much of this flower okay now i'm going to go with the green we're gonna add the foliage tuk, 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 and then we're gonna fill it in with all the other colors okay everybody still online yes we are doing this so i was actually talking today with my mom and i was asking her hey mom do you have any stories that you remember from when we were kids and any funny Christmas stories that I can share with everybody it's like do you remember anything so she told me some funny stories from when I was young and I was like, okay, I can I can share with them. So apparently, uh, when I was very young, I I don't remember this, but we used to have Christmas by my grandpa, and my mom really wanted for Christmas a turkey. Turkey is not very common in Romania. So my grandpa went ahead and bought bought her a turkey and actually cooked her cooked her a turkey. By the way, my grandpa used to cook really well. Like I'm nowhere near to how my grandpa used to cook. I think only my mom is. Uh, grandma didn't cook at all. So sorry, grandma, but she she wasn't very good at cooking. So my grandpa cooked this whole turkey for my mom and put it in the center of the table and told my mom like, okay, this is your turkey. You wanted a turkey, go ahead. But you're gonna have to uh, eat it yourself, all of it on your own for one Christmas. Mom didn't have any problem with that. <laughs> because turkey was her favorite kind of type of bird to do and to eat. So it was okay for her. So that was one funny story that mom, mom remembers. And the other one was she really wanted a watch for Christmas. And my grandpa bought her a watch. But he didn't want to just give it to her so he wrapped it into uh lots of packages like lots of small packages into big package so mom spent like about half an hour just unwrapping her gift because 
uh, yeah, it was wrapped in a box within a box within a box. So that that was yeah really hilarious. Uh, don't know if Mom found it that hilarious, but now she remembers it fondly, like Grandpa making jokes on Christmas and. This is how we're gonna do this. Uh, other things that I, mom was asking me, but what do you remember of the Christmases? And and then I was telling her, well, I remember that we always had um, my cousins come. Um, so mom used to give this very elaborate party on Christmas, and she used to invite everybody in the family and my cousins and my uh, my uncle and my aunt would come and we would play and somehow we always ended up being against everybody else in the neighborhood because okay for a little bit of contest where I come from in the winter it's very common that you have like the two meter snow okay um, and it's very common that you just yeah, you go to sleep at uh, night and you woke up the next morning and it's snow everywhere and it's literally two meters snow. You can't get out of your house. Um, now it happens a bit lesser because of, you know, climate change and, and all that. But still, uh, they do have this um, time of the year when everybody's like, ooh. So, we as kids were used to like really these harsh winters and uh, snow and making snowmen and I remember fondly when my cousins were coming, it was very fun because we always ended up having a snowball fight with the entire neighborhood kids. Uh, maybe... Not always winning. We used to get kicked because we were three with my two cousins and me. <laughs> and we were always getting kicked. Uh, so, yeah, maybe not the best. But, okay, look how this much, how pretty this is. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the centers with this gorgeous color. This is, uh, it's called Arabic Gold. I don't know why it's called Arabic gold, but it's called Arabic gold. It's really beautiful. I'm just going to add the dots. So, I, but what I remember is I didn't care that I wasn't winning the snowball fight. What I cared about is that we had a team. It was me and my cousins, and we were in a team. And, you know, we had a good fight. And we were, you know, against overwhelming odds. And that was the funniest part that was for me. Not necessarily winning or not winning or having uh, the biggest snow fight in the, in the history. We were maybe a bit the odd ones out. Always the geeks, always staying inside and, you know, having, watching animes and playing with computers and the kids outside were not necessarily <laughs> uh, very fond of that because that, that was weird. Like, why would you want to stay mostly inside the house and not play with, you know, friends and... Um, do what normal kids would do so but in the end i didn't really care about it uh i'm still thinking that i gained so much by studying and by doing what i was doing that it's okay so now we're gonna add you can see that this comes along pretty nicely um I added the green. It's very easy to do actually. It's very relaxing as well. Hmm. Did I did I choose the wrong one? All of a sudden it was green. 
You see how I even get confused. Okay, maybe I should put the green away. <laughs> even I get confused because they all look the same. Okay. I'm going to use the number six all around. It's okay. I'm using the Luminarte uh, Y and the Twinkly H2Os because even though I need I need this white, I like it that it's actually quite transparent. So I'm going to I'm going to do this here. Mm. I'm going to add the fine tech, which is like super opaque, later on at the end. That's when the actual opaque colors are gonna go. And those are going to be super nice. For now, I'm just adding some lesser opaque things. And this is gonna be nice. This is how I like to spend my, my days, like creating this type of art and being free being free to not have to worry about composition and anything I'm just going around the circle that's all I'm just adding wherever I think it's missing And there's some th things I think I'm missing here. When I'm going to add the gold, that's where you're going to see the... It's going to really pop out. And we're going to make a really thick red. So... For those of you are, who are watching, have you ever tried metallic watercolors and what is your opinion of them so far? And would you ever think of doing this on a, on a black paper for Christmas? I'm going to add more depth of color. I'm going to try to add more depth of color. I don't even know if I'm going to succeed, but maybe I'm going to go around with a white gel pen because I think maybe that's going to even make it more pop. So we're going to see. Now I'm a bit done with the twinkling HDOs. I'm going to put them a bit aside so that I have some time, some space here. I'm going to move these ones. And now I'm going to go with the gold. I'm going to use the Arabic gold. This is going to be so pretty. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to... And I think the gold is what makes it more Christmassy. Because the gold is really pretty. I'm just I'm just loving it. Okay. Um let's see if I can. I can add the gold here. This is why you need to let the water in the color sit for a bit because it makes it really creamy. That's when it, it actually creates the shine and the proper consistency. Notice how I, I use the belly of the brush. So I start with a point, press down and then lift it this is how this is how you make easy leaves okay. 
Let's try here to make some other ones. Continue watching. This is so pretty. And now you're only going to see my hand, but I need somehow to get in there. By the way, these colors can be layered on top of each other. It's not a problem. Uh, they can be layered pretty nicely. And uh, You might be wondering, is this really watercolor? And I think, yes, <laughs> this is watercolor, but it's a different type of style, right? It's a different type of, it's a water medium, definitely. Um, so I'll definitely say, yeah, it's watercolor. That's why they even make watercolor blocks in black, like, Nowadays, you can find anything, man. Okay. Now, I want to add some more um, white or silver. No, I'm not sure it's white. White, it's a bit too much, but more like silver. I'm going to add that to add a contrast. So, maybe these ones, I'll try to do tinier leaves. And they're going to just be sitting on top of things. You can clearly see that the wreath is taking shape. And this is something super easy. Like if you wanted to make really stylish watercolor cards, I would suggest you do it with black and metallics because you're going to be finishing up a lot of this in almost no time. It's going to be super easy because you don't need multiple layers. That's the problem with normal watercolors. You, you would need lots of layers to get this intensity, but this one, you don't need to, right? Look at how pretty this one is. You can clearly see what I'm doing with the fine tech that it has way more intensity of color. I mean, it's not a sponsored content, so don't worry about it. I'm just saying like, this one is really worth my, my money. And it's so pretty. I'm thinking maybe I'll do a series only on black. Like black on black or something. I think it needs also some berries here and there. So we're going to add those. In the middle, I want to put the sentiment, so I'm going to leave some some space there. Yeah, it's coming along really awesome. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do some berries. So I'm wondering if this one from the fine tech 
it's the one that I'm this is like really copper copper gold so I'm going to try to add some berries here and there You don't even need to do outline for these ones, I'm thinking. I'm thinking you're safe without outline, but I still want to do it with white because I believe it will bring it so much more. Such a gorgeous copper. This is so pretty. These are like the berries that you always find. Let's add one or two here. Maybe one or two here. This is where a synthetic brush like this that has such a fine point is really good and it doesn't matter like the price you're gonna pay you're gonna probably have to get a new brush maybe in a year or so but for the nine euros you paid for such a brush i think it's really worth it okay Okay, so let me see if I can get a little bit more green. And I'm hoping this is the green. I'm really hoping this is the green. You really can't see. To add more green here and here. To make it a bit more dark, darker, more opaque. Okay. And I'm going straight to paint with green the the berries um stems yeah the stems okay it's really nice pretty Notice that I'm walking on a block, but it's not, um, it's not, it's a block that it's quite loose, but because I'm not going to use so much water and I'm not using too much layers, too many layers, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to add some more green here and there where I think it needs because the paper is not going to curl seriously it's not going to curl it's not it's not enough water to say that it's going to curl or not okay really pretty let me try with some red to see if we add more red to certain areas if it becomes even more vibrant yeah i think so it's gonna be nice trying really hard not to touch any of the parts because i don't know which parts are yet still wet 
or done. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, grab a white gel pen and I'm going to add the details. But first, let me check the chat. If anybody wants to chat while I'm closing the H2Os. And why am I closing them? Because I'm pretty sure my darling cat will soon wake up and realize that there's stuff that he can put his uh, little paws in. <laughs> and that's not nice. Okay. I'm not sure that the video is making a lot of justice to what I'm seeing here, but the colors are just gorgeous. So, yeah. I have a sentiment. I'm still hoping it will fit. Let me try to see. Yeah, it will fit. <laughs> I'll explain about the sentiment later on. For now, let me close them to make sure that the cats don't go where they shouldn't. So the fine tech really comes into a nice, uh, nice metal tin that you can close and then no spillage or anything. This is how you do it. So I have my Unibow Synchno pen. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to outline everything, but I'm going to outline certain parts that I think require a little bit of oomph. Oomph. This is how I'm going to talk from now on. Oomph. And these are the green leaves. Notice that I'm not doing... Um, I'm not doing full lines or anything. Yeah. But I think they require a little bit of help to stand out. This is what you get with the Luminarte, with the twinkling H2Os. They're not that opaque or anything. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to do the flowers. But I know that the flowers, not all of them are dry yet. It's not a good idea to do the white gel pen on things that are not dry. Okay. Other Christmas stories that we wanted to... There was a funny thing that happened today. It was so sweet and I, I feel so bad for not being able to talk very well in Dutch. But um, the... It rang at the door and I was like, I don't know, I, I wasn't expecting any packages because I didn't order anything. So I was a bit surprised. And when I opened, there were just two little girls and um, I what I assume was the father uh, at my door. And the girls handed me, uh, there was this letter. And it was from Amnesty International. <laughs> uh, yeah, Johan, yeah, Hop would play with it for sure. Um, and um, what they turned out to be is that um, some of my letters got delivered to the wrong address across the street. So sometimes this happens that somebody else gets my letters. And the father said that the girls wanted to come and personally bring me my letters. And of course it was Amnesty International because it's an organization that I support um, for different different projects that they have. And they were sending me uh, a letter to thank me for the support. But it was so sweet. And they were like really young girls, um, I think three or four and they were like so shy and I was like even super shy because I don't speak that that good Dutch I mean I, I speak Dutch but not that good and I didn't I didn't want them to misunderstand me or anything so I was even more shy than them <laughs> in a way um, but yeah <laughs> it was so nice of them and they were like yeah we're um, uh, we just came to bring you the letter and, you know, Merry Christmas. I don't even know them. I don't even know where 
um, where which number on the street they are. I never saw them before, but I thought that was such a nice gesture. And like in the spirit of Christmas, that's so nice. Um, so. And by the way, the kids had their masks on. That's what, and the the father also. But the kids also, they were so tiny and they had their little masks on because, well, we're still in a lo kind of a lockdown. Um, not full lockdown, but still uh, a lockdown. And, you know, they were like taking it seriously and they were having their masks on and I opened the door. It's quite nice. Okay, my favorite white gel pen, let's talk about that, is the Uniball Signo. And, man, this is so nice. The white is really, like, vibrant. You don't get it a lot of times, like this vibrant. I had the Jerry Roll. The Jerry Roll is also a nice gel pen, but the lines are way thinner. So it depends where what you want to, you know, draw and do. Uh, this is way nicer. And I'm going to do... the berries as well. And then the last part that we're going to do is we're going to add the sentiment in the middle. And as Always with these ones, I'm going to add a sentiment from a stamp set. I have lots of stamp set for Christmas. I have not yet uh, put any effort into learning how to uh, do hand lettering. This is something for one of my goals for next year that I want to try and I want to I want to get good at. And I know that you have to put a minimum of a few like 50 hours, you know, or more to get good at this stuff. Um, I didn't even put necessarily all that much hours in, in my watercolors, but I'm still seeing lots of improvements. So, um, I would argue that if I'm going to put even 50 hours in my hand lettering, I'm going to, you know, be much, much further. Okay. So... This is what I call a Christmas read, okay? This is what I call a Christmas read. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, it's really pretty. And I'm going to try to do at least every month something on black paper because I believe it's very stylish and very beautiful. So now, where uh, my stamp set. My stamp set is from Simons and Stamp. And I have this... It's called Snow Much Thanks, which is very funny. Oh, by the way, I think I'm going to add some white dots because, um, you know, it's snowing. But Snow Much Thanks uh, is such a funny pun. And it's also for everybody that, hey, you don't have to celebrate Christmas per se, but it's still end of the year. It's still a celebration. It's still winter. So let's all get together. And I'm going to, I put it on my blog snow match stamp and uh, this is my water store block and i'm going to try to center it somehow and i'm using the delicata ink and this is a gold ink pigment ink so i'm going to try not to touch it too much yeah okay uh corina i didn't think the white gel pen would add much but holy hell it's stunning oh yeah thank you <laughs> i didn't think either Okay. Yeah, Corina. Sometimes uh, it's just it's a little pop. A little pop. So I'm going to ink my stamp. And this needs to be inked very good. Because I only get one shot of this. One shot. So. And now I'm going to try to center it. And let's center it properly. And 
I'm going to add some white gel pen on to this one as well. Yeah. It's no much stinks. I'm actually going to fix it, fix it up with my gel pen. The problem with this pigment inks, what happens is the watercolor paper has tooth and whenever you're trying to stamp, it just doesn't stamp everywhere. So I'm trying to fill in the spots with my gel pen and make it really pretty. And yeah, this is going to be it. No, it's not going to be it. I'm going to add some white gel pen on this one because it needs some white gel pen. It needs snow, right? It needs snow. <laughs> Let me. Okay. I know, I know. I, I'm, I'm laughing at myself here, but I'm like, yes, it needs snow. So let's add some snow on top of it. Let's make sure that it works. Look at it. It just needed some snow. Ha. This one also. This is what happens when I'm really pleased with something. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really pleased with how things look. Okay. So much thanks. Now I'm going to add some more dots here and there, uh, which represent the snow. Can you imagine having this one in real hang onto your door? <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> Thank you, Marlena. The colors are gorgeous. I'm just seeing now the the whole thing. And I, I, I need to I need to do a kind of acrobatics here because this is not dry yet and I don't want to smear it because this looks so pretty. So Okay. Snow match thanks. What I wanted to say is the following. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey that I started on YouTube. Thank you so much for always being there for my live streams and for watching my videos. I'm very grateful for all of you and for the support you've given me in this uh, year. And I'm hoping to see you all in the next year with lots more content like this and um you know regular schedules and regular live streams and that's what i wish is to have fun together is to have fun creating art and to realize that um what i'm doing is maybe also accessible to all of you it doesn't have to be just me doing it but it's quite um the same way i learned how to do it you can as well right oh thank you gorgeous Karina and Victor thank you so much uh, I'm not going to hold you up longer uh, this was my last Christmas live stream and a way to thank all of you for joining me and for being with me um, it's been a wonderful wonderful year even though it was 2020 and I know not everybody is going to agree with me but I'm I'm saying it um, it has been a wonderful year with wonderful friends and with all of you watching so thank you this one was for all of you and 
uh, you know, see you guys on the next videos that I'm having planned for the rest of the year and for the next live streams that are happening on a regular schedule. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to stop the stream now and hope to see you guys all next time. Do it.